Good afternoon, everybody. Christian here. Let's see, I'm trying to shoot this video. It's before Thanksgiving, but it'll come out after Thanksgiving. So happy Thanksgiving to everybody in the United States or anywhere. Um, today I want to talk about something that the Holy Spirit showed me a few days ago. I was watching a video by Charlie Champ. I forget what the name of that video was. Anyway, um, he's somebody that I, I listen to on occasion because I, I have heard him say things that I have seen come to pass and therefore I know uh, at least some of the things that he says are uh, line up with uh, they're prophetic now I say some of the things because I haven't heard everything he's ever said so I can't speak of everything but I have tested him found him to be speaking the truth and so I watched one of his videos recently and just in the video in the course of time he mentions something that the video is not even really about. Um, but as soon as he s spoke about this, the Holy Spirit just boom, hit me with it. And I was like, oh, okay. And I knew that was the video that I wanted to make. So, it, let's be careful here. We're, we're being advanced in our thinking, which means you don't, you don't analyze superficially. You don't run with some half-baked idea and, and assume things, right? We're, we're very strategic. We... We delve deep into things to understand them. So follow me, if you will. Charlie mentioned in his video that the devil hates it when you take land and that he had 20 acres of land. And as soon as he said the 20 acres of land, that's when the Holy Spirit dropped it on me. And I was like, okay, I see it. Now, I, I can't speak to Charlie's situation. I've never spoken to the man. I don't know why he bought those 20 acres. God may have some particular reason why he wanted him to do that, okay? But the principle that the Holy Spirit dropped on me is what I want to talk about today. So, so separate what Charlie did from what I'm about to talk about, okay? Because like I said, I don't have the understanding of why Charlie did what he did. What I have understanding on is another concept that is looks the same, but may not be the same. I keep going back. You got to be precise, all right? So, the, what the Holy Spirit was dropping on me is that a lot of people do this. They go out and they get a blessing from God and they say, okay, I'm going to go out in the country somewhere and buy some land. And now, you know, we're, we're, we're taking the land by doing this. And um, in reality, many times when people go out and buy land, they buy unproductive land and that's a problem that's an that's an error it's from a, a lack of understanding so let me uh, and this is what i'm saying separate from what charlie did i don't know why charlie did what he did he may god may want him to buy that land so he can build on it or whatever that would make it productive that it or i have never even, i came and speak to the land that charlie bought i have not seen this land i don't know what it is so let me give you a, a, some concept here um, farmland can produce crops, right? And so you could buy the land and then either, you know, lease it to farmers or, you know, whatever, who would then grow a product on it and they would pay you for the right to do that. Or you could, you know, s sow your own seed, reap the harvest, and then go sell that, you know, for yourself many different ways to do this but basically the concept is the land is productive now you could also go out and buy an acre of desert and it's not going to produce any crop right you know this because it's in a desert unless you go and irrigate it and things of this nature and know that the soil is good and you change the soil or whatever you could do to it but by and large there are land plots that will produce and there are land plots that will not. You could go and buy up 20 acres that are absolutely worthless, but they're worth something to somebody on the other side of the equation. So let's say you had 20 acres that didn't produce anything, but every single year you had to go pay the government in order to keep those 20 acres. You're paying property taxes, right? Uh, that kind of a thing. So now this land that you bought to take the land is actually 
taking you money, you know, and just keep basically ripping you off. And the more that you bought up, the more it would cost you, you know. Now, maybe you're buying land that's um, got lots of trees on it and you, you, you turn around and you sell these trees to some company that maybe uh, International Paper or something, they come along and they chop these trees down and they're going to go make paper with them and they replant your field, your your land with new trees and 20 years down the road you go and you chop them down again, you know, whatever the, prop, the concept is. The point is you want something that is productive. You don't want unproductive land. It'd be like going out and digging a well, only you never found water. So you put in all the time and all the energy, all the manpower, all the money to go dig for water and, and you never got it to then produce, right? So you wanna make sure you're not doing that. Um, a lot of people talk about going out and buying gold so that you can keep up with the rate of inflation or whatever, especially when people are talking about Prophetically, people have seen, not about myself personally, but other people have prophe prophesied that they have seen the crash of the dollar. And this is something that uh, I say I haven't seen that. I I've seen some extreme inflationary things which could be tied to that, but I haven't seen that particular thing. So, but they, because of this concern, they'll go out and they'll buy gold because they know it'll keep up with inflation, right? That's true, but so will land, right? But if you bought the land and it was productive land, you would beat inflation. You do even better than that, you know? And that's kind of what I understand about the businesses that I'll be buying in the future is that you're buying the land that has these businesses on them and therefore it's producing this positive cash flow. Um, you can do that in various different ways, but the point is the same. What the Holy Spirit was dropping on me was just, hey, people do this thing where they go out, they get the blessing from God, but then they didn't do the work. They don't know what they're, they're doing. And instead of going to financial advisors, which by the way, I am not, uh, I'm not giving you any financial advice one way or the other here. I'm just telling you what the Holy Spirit's revealing to me. When God gives you your wealth transfer, listen to people who've done the work on that area. Listen to people who are skilled in, uh, areas of finance and then um, listen to the counselors that, that God gives you and then pray about it and go the direction he's telling you to go but in this particular instance I'm just giving a warning be careful not to throw your wealth transfer basically into the garbage because you bought something thinking one thing but didn't have enough understanding to know no wait there's a difference between productive land and, and unproductive land and I want to make sure that I'm buying productive land uh, and that's true for, for businesses too. If you go out, buy a business that's struggling, and it's not something you can actually turn around, it's just a bad business idea or a bad business industry or whatever, then you're just gonna be fighting something you don't need to fight. Go pick the businesses that are, um, they have a, a moat, you know, kind of thing. And if you don't know what that is, then you need to educate yourself on that subject matter. So. That's all I have to share with you this week. I know it's a short one, kind of off the cuff, a little bit, but the Holy Spirit dropped it on me, a little refinement, a little honing of the edge, which we like to do here. So just passing that on to you. Again, enjoy your holiday. I will enjoy mine.